respected friends, life is split into three. Our childhood, our youth, and old age. In my previous talks, I have talked about the importance of old age. Now I want to touch upon the importance of youth. When I talk about old age or parents, the children say talk about the rights of children. And when you talk about the rights of children, the, ch the parents say talk about the rights of parents. My friends, the youth of a person is a very important part of his life. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam came as a mercy for the youth too. And one of the reasons why the youth is important is it combines not just knowledge but also power and strength. When a peer person reaches old age, he has a vast amount of knowledge. But unfortunately with old age, he no longer has the strength he had in his youth. In one hadith, Imam Hakim mentions in his Mustadrak, the Messenger of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam said, اغتنم خمسا قبل خمس شبابك قبل هرمك that appreciate value five things before the onset of five things and the first thing the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned was value appreciate take benefit of your youth before your old age and really a person cannot fully understand this hadith just by the English translation. The word in Arabic used by the Messenger of Islam comes from the word Ghanima. And Ghanima is known as the booty, spoils of war, capital, money. So just like a person guards his wealth, a person should guard his youth. In the hadith of Bukhari, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said that no son of Adam will be able to move his feet on the day of Qiyamah unless he answers five questions. Number one, where did you spend your life? In what did you spend your life? My friends, most of us on the day of Qiyamah we will be ashamed to say, Oh Allah, we spent our life in acquiring the dunya. And the second question, my friends, where did you spend your youth? It's something to ponder over. Asking one about his youth ask, after asking him where he spent his life. Whereas youth comes a part of one's life. What was the need of asking us where we spent our youth? To inform the Ummat that the youth is an important part of our life. Do not allow your youth to become wasted. In one hadith of Tirmidhi, the Messenger of God Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he describes seven people who shall be given the shade of Allah's throne on the Day of Judgment. The day, my friends, where the sun will be at a very little distance away from one. On that day, seven types of people shall be given the shade of Allah's throne. And from them, Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadat Rabbihi, that young man who grew up and spent his youth in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When his friends were going clubbing and drinking, he was the one controlling his desires and spending his time at home. When his university pals were going out on a Friday, this same young man spent his time studying. Abdullah ibn Barak rahmatullah mentions in his Kitab al-Zuhd that Allah says, O oh young man, the young man who forsook his desires and spent his youth in my obedience, you are equal to some of my angels. 
your status to me is that of my angels. And my friends, ulama describe youth as a person up to the age of 40. Up to the age of 40, a person is still young. So let's take full use of our youth. There have been cases recently in Batley of shootings and cars being broken into and damaged all because of drugs. My friends, where are we taking our youth? Now how many young teenagers, 17, 18, are what we call runners? They want to make a quick buck. They don't want to pursue education. And now to earn money in a quick way, they're selling drugs. My friends, the way you live your life is the way you shall die. And if you continue to sell drugs, and this is your lifestyle, my friends, the chances are you shall die dealing drugs. And ulama mentioned a person who smokes drugs, and this point is direct from ahadith. A person who smokes drugs, let's say cannabis, he will be deprived of the kalima at the time of death. He will not be able to read the kalima at the time of death. Let me ask you if this is the situation of a person who smokes drugs, what will be the situation of a person who sells drugs? So my friends, my young friends, I encourage all of you to pursue education, secular and Islamic. Now we have a very big gap. A person has a PhD, he's got a master's, but he does not understand the Quran. In, in my madrasa where I teach the children, if you ask them the definition of a hadith, 13 year old child will be able to tell you the definition of a hadith. He will be able to tell you the definition of a sahih, a hasan, a weak, even a fabricated hadith. Bihamdillah ta'ala. And why is it as men, alhamdulillah, Allah has given us the ability to pursue secular education. But why is it not that we are not making the same effort when it comes to Islamic education? My friends, Islamic knowledge is not only for ulama. It's for every single individual. So my friends, pursue Islamic <coughs> knowledge. And number two, keep the right company. Our company has an effect on us. And we find the message of God sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He encouraged us to sit with good people. Rather, I would say the Quran encouraged us to sit with pious people. وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ The statement in Arabic that show me your friends. Show me your friends and I shall show you your future. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِ